first super fight. Alexander Rio sporting some tights that are disturbingly high up to the knees. There's a very distinct rule in the spats wearing community. They should be somewhere around the ankle, but we'll forgive him because his jiu-jitsu is pretty sick, to be honest. Frank uh, definitely looks like the bigger uh, athlete here. Some show of mutual respect. He sits right back down. Every time, every time uh, Alex butt scoots, <coughs> a little puppy gets killed somewhere by Helio Gracie <laughs> in heaven. Frank tries to get a, see which way he should pass the guard here. Looks a little bit confused. Some uh, Jeff Glover tributes here. Alex doing his meow impression. It's going to be very difficult to pass Alex as a guard here. He has a very slick guard. He's flexible. Uh, and has some very nice attacks from the bottom as well, especially some uh, some nice foot locks. And he looks to be setting up one right now. He, that that uh, foot that is dangling in front of his opponent's hip is a bit in a danger for a, for an estimologue, but it doesn't seem to be the case here as his opponent is content to stay in half guard and work towards a pass. Both guys looking relaxed, looking for an opening to, uh, to work a uh, technique. Alex smiling here. Oh, that is some insane heel. flexibility. Indeed. I wish I had this for my heel hooks. It was a nice attempt. It leads to, it leads basically to the same, same thing. And he sits right back down into his guard again, where he's most comfortable. Doesn't that was want to waste a any energy staying on the feet, uh, getting taken down here. Yes, and. To be completely honest, and this coming from a huge takedown advocate, in submission only, it doesn't make that much of a difference. So, in some cases, it is nicer for the for the audience to see someone pull guard and go for submissions than to have two people just uh, in the clinch, basically not exchanging. For sure, and also uh, going for takedown so it will cost you a lot of energy. You will be drained, and uh, both of uh, these guys know that it's a long match. You gotta save uh, save some energy and not waste uh, waste energy on getting a, a takedown if it doesn't uh, accomplish what they want. Again, a nice knee rip by Alex. Let's see if he can keep it tight here. He has hard. a footlock grip. Smart by Alex to keep that footlock grip, so it's hard to see. He's in out. danger of a. Uh, uh, not anymore. And he goes for a heel hook here. Alex goes for a heel hook. He really pulls on it. Let's see if he can get it. His Frank. opponent. His opponent seems confident in this position, but his heel isn't in the best place right now. Frank really looking like he isn't faced by the heel hook attempt at all. Probably been in that situation a lot of times and uh, a lot of sweating person. going on because of the lights. That's another aspect of the super fights that athletes seem to take into account. And of course the crowd here. A lot of people uh, attending here tonight and. A lot of noise. People are uh, probably a little more nervous than uh, than usual. All uh, all eyes are on them. Yes, on it's the it's a great experience for the athletes, and uh, it's a great compliment to the Norwegian uh, grappling scene to see this many people at an at an event like this, uh, where you're seeing mostly uh, blue blue and purple belt competitors. It's very nice and uh, very nice to see, and it. It shows that grappling in Norway and in Scandinavia has a very bright future ahead. Still in, uh, in a leg lock position here, but Frank has his uh, left knee on the mat, which will make it very hard for Alex to, to attack any sort of heel hook or an ankle lock here. He could try a waiter sweep from here if he grabs the other leg. Now his heel is off the floor. Again, yes, this is. he has good control of the hips, so what he has to do is arch back, not just reap across, but he has to grab the heel and he's going for a deep, for a toe hold. And Frank does the same. Alex defends nicely nice. by, by rolling with the motion of the toe hold there. Going for another leg lock is Frank Ooh, here. Nice. And a nice calm escape by Alex Rio here. A very nice match and the crowd is enjoying what they're seeing here. A little bit of a coughing intermission we have here. And Alex is right back to his guard. 
looks like his game plan is to, to sit to guard, uh, get on his right hip and work that leg lock uh, attack. We normally don't see this in, in Nogi, we usually see the sit-up guard because there's a, a danger of leg locks, but Frank doesn't seem to be uh, pressing for any leg locks or posing real danger, so Alex can afford to be on his back in, more, in a position that we see more in Gi Jiu-Jitsu. In a reverse De La Hiva position here is Alex with his right leg on Frank's thigh. And uh, his uh, left knee is now going to control the, the distance here. So ideally, he would probably get his, uh, his left foot in front uh, and also use that foot on his uh, on Frank's hip or uh, hip or shoulder to keep the distance to not be uh, be smashed uh, like this because this would be very draining after a while. It is always the the advantage of a top player if he can get a nice sma smashing position because. At a high, higher level, you simply use gravity and the weight of your body to to smash. There isn't much exertion here. They are both competitors are smiling at each other, slapping hands. Slightly more than five minutes have passed here. And Alex back again, into that position again, again into a re. Insisting on that position is very good yeah. at forcing the position, but Frank has been escaping it every single time. He kind of gives the. The leg reap because he's confident in defending. Ooh, this, his leg is in a nasty position. It is indeed, and here he has a knee bar. Let's see if he can work yeah. the knee bar here. And he's really it's kind of a it. short, not the best leverage. Frank is following the principle of attacking is the best defense. Absolutely, and that kind of uh, gets uh, Alex off his game there. Oh, and he is in mount. Beautiful. Great mount. We might see a restart here, yes. He followed the back nicely, and uh, when Frank tried to recover his uh, half guard, uh, Alex stepped right into mount and, uh, and rolled with it. Very nice movement from uh, Alex Rui here, but uh, also a nice escape uh, from Frank. The mount in in nogi and in submission only is not is not as as devastating as it is in uh, in gi jiu jitsu, for instance. So we might we might see Frank uh, recover here and get a get a nice. Nice escape, but uh, so far Alex is in firm control here. I agree, Mia. The, the mount is very difficult to work from, uh, especially in Nogi. It's much easier both in Gi and in MMA. Uh, so let's see. Usually, when the people are mounted, the guy on bottom will look for uh, to push off and maybe get back to a heel hook position, and that might be what Frank is uh, is doing here. And Alex is a looking for a triangle, triangle attempt. And he goes to a reverse triangle he's and he's out. Very hard to secure a triangle, especially when the when both guys are kind of slippery here. Frank taking some deep breaths. Yeah, uh, we're eight minutes. Sorry, eight minutes into the match. We got 12 minutes uh, left of the time here. Alex looks uh, really relaxed and has been uh, been the, the aggressor here, but Frank has been countering with some nice uh, leg lock attempts uh, as well. So let's see who gets uh, gets the fatigue. Here a little biceps battle. I think Frank wins this one by a little bit, but biceps don't mean jack in jiu-jitsu, in grappling. Nice to see a little showmanship from both guys here. Now in a, in a straight ankle lock. This, this is actually one of Alex's best moves. Yes, and especially when he can reap, he can he can get a very nice uh, foot lock from the reposition a la Riley Bodicom. He's not the the biggest guy, but he gets a tremendous amount of pressure on that uh, that ankle from yeah. that position. So let's see now when Frank doesn't give the reap that much, uh, if he can go for that uh, that leg lock. He would prefer to to actually take Frank to his uh, his right. That's where he does his yes, uh, best work exactly. and with that left uh, foot on Frank's hip. Frank should look to put his left knee on the floor. If he can put his left knee on the floor, he can get a, in a smashing position, sort of like a leg drag type situation, and he could find some success there. Because this, he, he is confident, but it's a false confidence because a skilled leg locker here will, will take his leg home. So far, this hasn't been the, been the case, but leg locks are some of the fastest submissions they come on very fast if yeah, 
yeah. Frank, de Frank definitely has the, the size advantage. I think that helps him uh, a great deal here. It's very hard for uh, for Alex to, yeah. to move that uh, that left knee over to the other side, and he, he keeps getting smashed here. Now we transition to an ankle lock on the other side. Very tricky leg positioning here by Alex Rio. He's very flexible. And yeah, he's doing some position, positions that most most mortal man can do. And it's it's nice to see. It's also this this kind of a position that he has is also tiring on the on the outside of the hip a bit if he keeps it in a long position uh, in a if he if he stays there for long because his opponent is pressuring down and forward and it provides some strain on on his hip and his glutes. But uh, I don't think it will uh, be a huge factor in this match. Absolutely, it's very very tiring staying like this, but. Uh Alex is also used to being uh, being the smaller guy in uh, in the gym and used to guys uh, putting pressure on him, so he's and used to it. But it's also a tiring factor. But, uh, let's see if. Uh, and we have just passed the halfway mark of the match. Proved to be entertaining so far, and we might see a sweep coming up coming up here. What I would like to see from Alex, he w if he, with this control, if he shifts his opponent's leg to the other side, he has an inside heel hook. And we've seen l lately in modern leg locking, a la Eddie Cummings and Gary Tonin, that heel hook proves to be extremely effective because this control is very good. As we can see, Frank cannot escape it here. And, uh, but it's kind of hard to finish a heel hook on the outside. If he shifts it to the inside, uh, it would, it could be very su successful here. Yeah, I agree. We see more and more people that are real skilled leg lockers. Either from this position, put the leg, put the leg of the opponent on the other side and working that inside heel hook, or actually switching his feet to the outside and working the heel hook from that position. You see a lot of guys like Paul Harris, Garrett and Eddie Cummings, yeah. like you mentioned, doing uh, doing that finish instead of uh, the, the traditional reaping position, which. Uh, which is now often defended. People have come up, but there is sort of an evolution in grappling as well. And leg locks are all the buzz right now, and, and it's because they've kind of evolved to be more effective and to be more versatile. I definitely think that's a good, uh, good evolution. And that, uh, Absolutely, that's because what, right what we're trying to do in, in grappling is we try to defeat our opponent in any any way possible barring some nasty stuff like he biting hooking like stuff like that so we're trying to see which which thing is the most effective and uh, leg locks are certainly proving to be very effective absolutely once once more people learn how to defend them properly we might see a different kind of evolution but that's the beauty the beauty of the game I would like to see Alexi trying uh, to, uh, to work some different attacks also. He's been working that same attack uh, on that uh, left leg of Frank uh, uh, all, uh, all the, the whole match here. So let's see if he can pull some other tricks uh, out of his sleeve. From Frank we need to see more, uh, more activity I believe. He's uh, yeah. countering maybe a little bit too much of Alex's game. And, uh, he's, he's trying to address the, the symptoms of his problems. He's trying to go uh, to control the, the arms of Alex, but when he's in a reposition, what he should really be doing is, is trying to get the control off of his hip, because that's the first step of getting out, out of a leg lock position. So it would be nice to see more of that. This is a comfortable position that Alex is kind of used to because uh, his his opponent's weight is going into the floor through his through his frame. It's very proper right here, and so he's not expending as much energy as you would think. Uh, however, he needs to he needs to attack more if he wants to finish here. You got six minutes left uh, on the clock here, and uh, I believe Frank needs to pu uh, push the pace a little bit if he wants to uh, to win this. Uh, I know for a fact that Alex has some uh, really good uh, back control, so if it goes to yeah. overtime, uh, it might be hard to shake him off. He's like a little little backpack. Uh, yeah. when he's, uh, he's on the it's, back there. It's extremely annoying, I can attest to that. And we haven't seen that many submission attempts from, from Frank other than uh, a few leg lock counters which were initiated by Alex, so he should be 
he should be trying to finish here because it doesn't prove much if he can withstand the, the attacks from bottom here but uh, finishing is what, what we want. Here. He follows the back in front here. Nice back take. Let's see if he can follow the back. No, he cannot. Oh, he can and Frank escapes and he takes a little breather. But this is what I would see for, love yeah. to see from Alex. A little bit more action. He's the smaller guy, but uh, that usually means a little bit yeah. of speed advantage as well. He also has uh, Eduardo Tetarios in his corner, who probably probably forgot more about jiu-jitsu than most people here. He has a great depth of knowledge, so he can provide Alex with some with some advice on what to do here, how to how to do uh, attempts like the one we've seen before, because it was very close to him and ending up on the back. Frank got his coach uh, Michael Gomez here, a black belt uh, under uh, Hodge Gracie. Part of the, he's part of the Hodge Gracie team that's, uh, that started here in uh, here in Norway. But uh, right now he looks a little bit uh, lost in Alex's guard. Uh, very understandably, it's very hard to deal with a flexing guard guard like this if you're not used it's, to it. It's uh, very and have training. It's very frustrating. But what he's doing now is the first real proper attempt at passing because he is he is stripping. Uh, Alex's legs which are controlling his hips and uh, that way he can pass if he just tries to control the upper upper body he he might not find the success that he wants here we have three minutes and 45 seconds to go here so we're nearing the, the end here and we see a guillotine, yeah. Let's see if Alex can turn this and end up on top. He just might. He could have had the opportunity, but he chose to, uh, to the, stay on his back. Yes. I don't know if that was a good decision. He could have changed things up a little bit and try to get on top more aggressively there. One of the keys to winning a match like this is to explode a little extra bit in the scramble. When they're in a neutral position, it's it's harder to do something, but in the scramble is really where you can find the, the advantage. And we see more of the same here. Yeah, especially in those longer scrambles, late in the, you're late in the match, uh, it might be easy to pull something off when the guy is uh, guy's real tired. So if you push a little bit extra for that, uh, that longer mm -hmm. scramble, you might get the advantage uh, right there. Frank coming through with uh, the right knee again, but... He's being controlled by the freakish flexibility from Alex here. We hear a lot of supporters here uh, cheering for Frank. Alex is now pushed to defend a little bit more, but his legs are still blocking any progress from Frank. We have two minutes left here. Looks like they are both uh, cruising a little bit, maybe expecting that this is an overtime uh, coming soon. A guillotine attempt from Frank here, but nothing. Pretty casually defend that Alex is more concerned about his hair than the, that guillotine. Fixes the hair and the hair looks pretty good right now. Frank pushing a little bit on the face, trying to work a little bit of different stuff right now, but it might be a little bit too late. Put, puts on the pressure, but it's only one minute. Yeah, yeah it left. would have to be a, a very good submission, a fast one. But uh, at this time, it seems that Alex will be able to recover some sort of half guard. Yeah, his right, his right foot hooked Frank's uh, left leg, and he's in half guard. Might he might look for a deep half guard, and here it's kind of evident like his Frank's torso, especially, is much bigger than uh, than Alex's. So, this weight on top of him is proving to be a minor difficulty. One minute, one minute, and a nice attempt here from Alex. 
and sort of a re reverse triangle kind of oh or a gogo -go plata that would be insane if you could pull that off that pulls right out it's slippery and sweaty and uh, he's very strong here a little bit a little bit of frustration maybe showing here but we're we're straight back into the action and into the into the half guard position We have 20 seconds to go, so it is extremely likely that this will go into the overtime. Hopefully, we'll see we'll see the athletes go for it in in the overtime, and we'll see a submission or two. Time. And so, the time is up right here. A show of admiration for the crowd, for the for the athletes here, and now we're gonna have a highly advanced rock paper scissors draw. And Alex seemed to pull paper while Frank had yeah Frank had a rock. So yeah, a rock is usually a really bad choice yeah. uh, when you start out. Do you think that uh, a lot of strategy was involved in them choosing their uh, first move? Actually, it doesn't really matter because here we are on the back and uh, Alex is gonna try to be very backpacky here. Is that a word? I don't think so. Um, maybe I made it up. Can we put it in the dictionary? <laughs> and he escapes. But yeah, he escapes he's right out. Right. That, was, that was fast. Very impressive. That's Frank, what she said. Like we said, Alex has uh, some really good back control, so very nice escape from Frank here. She goes for the same choice. Yeah. I think he he should be able to start in a seat belt, yes, because it yeah. it makes a huge difference. No, Alex is fighting the seat belt, but uh, I'm pretty sure this is how he should start. This is definitely not ideal for Frank. Yes, this this should be the position here. Yeah, this is this looks like correct position. Here. And Frank is a body triangle right away, which is smart, like we mentioned earlier, to, uh, to eat up some of that time on the clock. Frank is really, really strong. He definitely has a strength advantage, so fighting hands here. Ooh, a neck crank. This is nasty. This is totally legal, but horrible. It will take a lot of guts from Alex to not tap here, and he doesn't. He's, he's as tough as they come. He says no with his, uh, yeah. his finger here. It is. You see him fight the, the hand on top. Yeah. He move that hand, because that's the one that's going to yeah, lock the submission it. in. And Frank was right back to right the back to it. again. Attacks this is, back to back this is actually a good strategy by Frank, because even if, if Alex survives here, those neck cranks and uh, chokes over the face, they take a lot out of you. And plus, with the with the body triangle, it's even more exerting. Definitely. And he might. Out Alex here. It, we can't see it totally, but it seems Alex seems to be out. If he can turn to his right, he's gonna be out of this. We should definitely give. And up he's the out. Here. Yes, he's out. And the ref stops it. A very good display of both relentless attacking from Frank and uh, toughness from Alex. The rear naked looked like it might be on, but Alex just says no and uh, defends it with ease. And we go back, back to back control. He's going for the same strategy to get the body triangle. Oh, and this. He has a triangle here. Beautiful. He needs to adjust a little bit. This might be tight. Yeah. He, he has long, lanky legs, does, uh, does Alex Rio. And he, needs, he needs to make Frank think of the armbar as well, because that will take away from his ability to defend. He should definitely, but. I think he should uh, choose here what kind of triangle he either yes, needs to go exactly. belly down or uh, square his hips up and go for a casual triangle. And there's an armbar. I think there was a tap, yes. There was a tap. 
Uh, there's a protest of the tap. A verbal tap, it seems. It seems that it was a verbal tap. Uh, we seem to have a situation here because the referee is not is not sure here what happened, and it is it is his job to to decide. And it's it's next to next to impossible to start in the same position. It looked like a tap for me, but it was it's hard yeah. to see. It was kind of a, a quick tap with a one with one. Uh, with one hand. We it's it's very hard to restart them in the same triangle position, but it might it might be possible to be honest. Frank points at the camera saying he wants kind of a, a video replay or some of that sort, but it the wouldn't ref it wouldn't restart yeah. it in the in the back mount and kind of do the round right over again. Right now it doesn't really matter. It's they're starting again and then they're going the to the same position. Again. Yes, this is nice to see. Let's see if you can get it this time. Now Alex has to make sure to tap him to tap him here so that that there will be no doubts what happened before or what would have happened before. And the ref is having a close look, he's yeah. real close to the action right now. Armbar doesn't want to leave it as a controversial decision one more yeah. time. But Frank is definitely tough. We don't know if he, he tapped it. The crowd was kind of uh, we to believe that yeah. he tapped it, uh, it sounds like. Both the, the crowd and the video wouldn't be good indicators because we don't have a microphone there and if, if it was really a verbal tap then that would also count and Alex I think he claimed that he, he heard it but we'll never know and it doesn't really matter. We're in the same position and hopefully we'll see a finish from here. So they will keep working until, uh, until either a submission is uh, acquired here or he uh, escapes fully out of the, the submission, even though it's not back mount anymore. This is also very dangerous. This is a shoulder lock here. Frank is very tough. And he Frank is... Tap. But he's kind of turning into a conventional triangle here. Alex is a little bit worried. I think that he will pull out quickly if, yeah, he, uh, yeah. if, he, uh, if he tries to adjust. Hip. But uh, I think that's what he really wants to get that right mm -hmm. knee uh, up and get his hips, uh, both his hips on the ground and parallel. L look, looking for that wrist lock, actually, it looks like. Yeah. And, and he's with... twisting. And, and armbar right oh, there. Armbar is there. One. Oh, great toughness on display here for, from Frank. He has, to, he has to fight on two fronts here, both the triangle and the armbar. Usually defending the one will give up the other. Yeah. Is it maybe, maybe if Alex oh, put his to... other leg over, he might get an armbar. Yes, and here he goes for the armbar and right into the triangle again. Nice, very nice. And but he still does not have the angle. He's right back to that weird triangle on the side. It's kind of, it's not a real inverted triangle and it's not a normal if, triangle. If Frank tried to, if he puts all of his weight onto his onto Alex's uh, right knee and he tries to back out he might have a good chance of, at slipping out but he's I just agree. and there he adjusts yeah. and goes for a more conventional triangle let's see if he gets this it's really oh, yeah. Frank claps and the crowd roars And for, for those of our, viewer, our viewer, viewers who haven't rolled or competed for 20 minutes, we have to just... Frank, Frank. He's able to tap him, and we go to another submission. So it has just been announced that uh, if Frank taps, taps Alex here, we go to another overtime, and if he doesn't, if Alex ex escapes, he wins. Absolutely. And uh, and Alex really did get some good control time with that triangle. Uh, you gotta note that as well. Yeah. If Frank gets the gets the submission here, he, he will still uh, be in a good uh, he have an advantage in that uh, regard. Uh, Alex was on his way to escaping, but uh, he got rid of one hook. It's still a dangerous position, but if he can rotate more or or spin it, he could escape here.
and it has been stopped. There was no submission danger and he lost one hook, so the referee decided to, to stop it. And we have a big ovation here for the winner, Alexander Rio. Great display by both both fighters. Absolutely, he was the, the smaller, the smaller guy, but he proved to be more uh, technical and, and smarter in the in the overtime here. And uh, I bet his hips and knees are going to be very sore tomorrow from holding that triangle and the leg lock position for that long. For sure, he got his sore from that, and a very good uh, effort by uh, by Frank here. He, uh, he fought well, he defended a lot of uh, bad positions and uh, he even had some uh, attempts on, uh, on some leg locks yeah, of his yeah. own, so I, I much was, respect to Frank. I well. was very impressed. I wasn't familiar with him at first, before. I knew Alex, but he showed to be on par with, uh, with Alex here. A good, a good display from him. We'll now see if we can get, uh, get an interview with, uh, with the winner Alex uh, Rio here.